this has to be the greatest Void Hunter build that has ever graced the presence of Destiny 2. I just want you guys to watch what we do to all these enemies and champions and how we use three supers back to back to back for every single wave of enemies in the first four minutes or so of this Grandmaster. As you can see in the gameplay, this is a solo Grandmaster and we don't even care. Literally, I can do whatever I want in here and it feels so good. Now, this is all thanks to the infinite loop we have of invisibility to move about the battlefield as we please. And this lets us take advantage of our overall kit to its fullest. And that includes things like Devour for health on every single kill, no matter the source of that kill. So yes, Unravel damage and Threadlings count. We get Weakened for a 15% debuff on every enemy. And this just lets our Strand verbs go crazy for extra damage. And then of course, Unravel apply to all the enemies and champions. And then a ton of Threadlings popping out for further damage to everything. All of this while gaining Volatile Rounds as well to create these great purple and green explosions that are so satisfying to see. But what makes it even better is we have a super available for every single group of enemies if we choose to use it, and that's thanks to not needing Gerfalcons anymore, which allows us to take a different exotic for the build. Our super adds a 30% debuff to everything it touches, and it also suppresses everything as well, which is a super underrated debuff in hard content. And that allows us to go to town with our weapons and abilities to trigger everything. You also will create so many orbs of power and void breaches that when you're done killing a wave, they will be left lying all over the ground and your fire team is going to love you for those orbs of power, trust me. Now you might think the gameplay loop is hard, but it is so, so easy once you understand everything and get it down. You start off by throwing your smoke bomb at one single enemy, then kill that enemy with your weapon. So this one action and kill triggers everything. That kill will proc invisibility thanks to the stylish executioner as our first aspect. Any void debuff target we kill will grant us invisibility. We then move to where we killed that one weakened enemy and grab the orb of power and the void breach. And that one single kill created both of those for us thanks to the echo of harvest fragment, where defeating weakened targets creates both for us. So we have now proc devour thanks to echo of starvation, where picking up either the orb of power or the void breach will activate devour. Once you grab one of those, you then just position yourself somewhere to fire off a few shots with your strand weapon. The reason for this is that orb of power we grabbed also proc'd unraveling orbs from the artifact, and firing off those few shots at enemies will apply the unravel debuff for us. Now once you have applied that unravel, throw out your vortex grenade. This will group up the enemies, it'll cause damage on its own, which will proc and spread all the unravel to all the nearby enemies. You can then try and let your vortex grenade get one single kill, so that we can proc volatile rounds for 10 seconds on our void weapons. But if this doesn't proc for you, it's not the end of the world. It just adds more damage and purple explosions, which we all like to see. Using your heavy machine gun when needed to proc Repulsor Brace as well for Void Overshields, or for dealing damage to beefier targets like champions. I can't stress this enough on how powerful this Void Hunter build is, and once you get it down, you will never have a better time playing Destiny 2. Now for the exotic armor piece that is Orpheus Rig. This has the perk Uncanny Arrows, and it provides ability energy for each target tethered by Deadfall Anchors. This gives us 50% of our super back pretty much instantly, and it gives us 10% grenade melee and class ability energy for each enemy tethered. So you technically could get a full grenade recharge off of your super. But we now use our super and get 50% back instantly, and we're going to get the rest very quickly as you can see in the gameplay. We pair this with the exotic weapon, called Buried Bloodline. Hopefully more of you guys have got it from the dungeon so far. The last video I did like two weeks ago, I know a lot of people didn't get it yet, but if that's one thing I can urge you guys to do in this long season of The Wish is get this one exotic. It will change the way you play the game for multiple builds. I could have put out like 20 builds with this thing already, and I've restrained myself from doing it just out of the kindness of my heart for all of you. This has the trait Violent Reanimation. Multiple final blows with this weapon grant devour to the wielder. This is really nice on other subclasses, but as far as this void build goes, we're just getting one kill and grabbing that orb of power. It's much easier than getting four kills in something like a Grandmaster. Yes, if you're running a lost sector, sure, four kills is going to happen very quickly. But what the catalyst does for this is, while devour is active, this weapon weakens on hit. So since we grab that orb of power, we always have Devour active. This allows this weapon to weaken anything it hits, which means any enemy we kill will proc Stylish Executioner. We used to have to use Gerfalcons for that, right, for volatile rounds to keep proccing our invis. Now we just use this exotic weapon, which that's what opens up the door for Orpheus Rig or other exotics if you want to use something else in its place. For your primary weapon, just take something with Strand to apply the Unravel debuff. 
And then your heavy, again, you can take whatever you want. I like something with repulsor brace to add void overshields, but it could also be a strand weapon, like the new strand LMG with something like demo and hatchling on it. For the subclass, vortex grenade is your best choice. And then along with stylus executioner, we're gonna take vanishing step as the second aspect. This just allows us to dodge and go invisible, just in case you need a get out of jail free card, or you need another source of invisibility to go grab an orb of power or something. For the fragments, we went over echo of starvation and echo of harvest already. The last two is gonna be echo of persistence to make invisibility over shields and devour last longer. 15 second timer on devour and about a 12 second timer on visibility is really nice. And then echo of instability, defeating targets with grenades grants volatile rounds to your void weapons. Everything to do with mods plays into creating orbs of power and getting ability energy back for those orbs. On the helmet, it's double harmonic siphons to get 3.25% of our super back per orb of power instead of 2.5%. On the gauntlets, we take firepower so that vortex grenade can spawn an orb of power and then bolstering detonation and focusing strike. This allows grenades and melee attacks that we do feed our dodge ability. The chest piece is all your damage reduction and I took a harmonic reserves for the bloodline. And then on our boots, we take absolution, innervation, and orbs of restoration. This just means when we pick up an orb of power, we get close to 25% grenade energy back. You pair that with the devour perk that you're getting around 13 to 17% per enemy killed, we're gonna be getting that grenade back often. On the class item, you're gonna take a bomber that just feeds the grenade again. We take reaper, so another way to spawn an orb of power after we dodge and we kill something with the bloodline. And then the last thing is special finisher. You're gonna be picking up so many orbs of power that you'll have three stacks of armor charge pretty often, and then just finish an enemy to get a special brick for you and your entire fire team. On the helmet, you can also slot a special ammo finder for some extra help. For stats on the build, 100 resilience is what you want to hit, then aim for 100 discipline and up your mobility as high as possible. And then for the artifact mods, you're just going to take unraveling orbs, so your strand weapons can apply the unravel debuff after picking up an orb, and horde shuttle. Damaging unraveled targets with a weapon occasionally spawns a threadling. Again guys, Bungie launched the LFG finder in game, and I urge you to use it on the new dungeon and try to farm out this exotic, the bloodline. There's not many times in Destiny where I say, hey, go get this weapon, because I think there's a ton of different weapons that can be used in different situations and different builds and yeah sure sometimes there's like a best in slot but normally there's something else that can do what something else is already doing but the bloodline providing devour and weaken no matter what class you're on is a game changer for so many different builds so if that is one thing i can get you guys to do it is farm that dungeon exotic it's one thing that's really worth your time and i was using it on like an arc warlock build running geomags and chaos reach and it was so nice having that healing on any source from any kill and applying the weakened debuff so much thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate it i hope if you have the exotic you can try out this build because i don't think you'll take it off the rest of the season i'll see you guys all in the next video have a great rest of your day